Hello, hello, welcome back and welcome to part 10 of our Panzer Tamiya group build tank. So in the last part, I was um, putting in some of the accessories on the um, guards of the upper hull and, um, and I'd painted the tracks in uh, primer and they've dried obviously it's uh, now the next day so we can move on um, first of all if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you get notified of the videos as they come out and also um, don't forget to uh, comment your comments are welcome on here uh, I enjoy reading your comments I get quite a lot of information from your comments so thank you and uh, yeah, give us a thumbs up at the end if you like the video. So, what have I been doing? Well, since the last video, I've actually gone ahead and put a few extra things on here because the paint dried, so I put them on. So as you can see here, on the side, um, we've got the box on here. I put these tarps on just in the last few minutes, actually. Um, there's our wooden block for the jack. Uh, we've got a few other bits and pieces. We've got the spare wheel, which I haven't glued in. It just sits in that frame there. And uh, I may not glue that in. We'll see. There's a iron bar under there. It's like a crowbar. But, uh, they've come up all good. All the jerry cans are just sitting in there. They're not glued in. There's also a decal. I can get one of those out I'll show you there was a deck that I put on the side of the tank Take that. that there it is in there which you can't see because it's behind the cans but that's okay again I will probably not glue those in uh, around the other side it's around Again, the other spare wheels on the back there. Got another crowbar of some sort there. The tarp lying underneath in the back there. Just see that. There it is. And we've got the spade set up in there. There's our jack sitting there. Um, lots of tools here, an axe. There's a, like a crankshaft there, another tarp covered piece. Now on here, there's also a little um, brace, which I've recently painted up. There it is there. That goes over the top, sort of holds in place those tools. But one end of it attaches down onto the lower hull, which this is obviously not connected to yet. And the other atta attachment point <coughs> excuse me, is here. So I've just put that aside for the moment. Uh, to go on towards, well, at least after this has been attached. And that attachment point, if you look on here, is just in there. So I'll put that when this is actually holes on top of the, um, well, sorry, the upper hull is on top of the main hull. Make sense? Okay. Um, also, uh, with this, um, I was just going through the next, crossing them all off. We've gone through and crossed off up to step uh, 24 now. So everything on the whole tank, uh, except there was a couple of things. Um, oh, yes, step 20, uh, those tracks that go on the tank, they're also undercoated with the main tracks, and I'll, I'm going to paint them all the iron colour all together and I'm thinking of probably doing the weathering work on the tracks off the tank it might be best uh, just so that everything is all done at once and they will match up you know or also remembering that these tracks are spares so they haven't been used as much at all like the ones on the running on the tank so they're not going to be quite as you know filthy as those but they will be covered in sand, dust, and so forth. But we'll get to that. Um, now, also, again, I'm moving on to 
checking all the steps and then I got to where was it uh, uh, number 25 where I made a note earlier paint later so on the turret let's have a look at this here's the turret just do that now just on the side there is uh looks like there's a machine gun there so that needs to be painted just a uh, gun metal which i'll do that touch that up pretty much right now with a brush and then that'll cross off 25 then i've gone all the way down that was all putting the turret together all crossed off uh, that i can cross off these were all painted up so i can go through and say I've checked those all completely um, same with this on the turret it's all done nothing I haven't missed still going through 32's done that's completely done these are all done so we can cross them off don't have to go back to look at them again uh, over the page again we're at uh, the top of uh, the hatches on the top here they're all they're done for sure those ones were painted on the inside so we've done all of that there's nothing else to be added just checking all looks good yeah so we can put across through that Put across through that over the page jerry cans well they're on but they're not glued but that's fine that's what we want them to be that's good uh, that was the b tank we don't worry about uh, must be getting close right and there's some more tracks to go on the tank so that's where we're at now where we have to get all that sorted. Oh, and there it is. I don't know if you met, remember in the last video or two, I mentioned, oh, what is that for? Where does that go? And then, well, there we go. So there it is, C6. So it holds one of the tracks onto the front of the tank, one of the spare tracks on the front of the tank. And that's why I left it off so I could put the track on first. Although it does look like it will, the track should slip down behind this. Um, I'll test fit that later. I do know I have I've painted these. I've got all these uh, ready to be painted up properly, so that's all good. That little tarp is on. The, blo the blocks are on. All the accessories around, other than the tracks, are pretty much on our tank now. And then, of course, we get down to our crew. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> um, oh, and over the page, we've got our spare wheels which is unusual why they left that to step 40 when I could have made them up back in the beginning of the build when I was building all of those wheels. But anyway, just uh, go through your instructions if you're building this right to the end before you start because you'll come across things like that where while you've got all the paint and you're doing your rubber and you're doing your liquid masking and everything and then you've got to realise, oh, look, I could have built those two back then. Um, they're talking about positioning figures. We've got all the sandbags here. So all these sandbags can go on and they're in here ready to go. So we might as well put those on as well. There's no reason why not. Although they do seem to sit up against the upper hull. So maybe that is why they've left that till later. Oh, I think they do because they they're sitting up close to where that track is that that braces for. So we will hold off on doing that. There's a couple other little pins here, E22, that I haven't marked off. And I think, again, I think they're holding tracks there as well. Um, I might have to get those out, paint them up and put them aside to be done later. I know this has to be done later. Not too sure what that is. And there's a helmet on the side that I haven't done, but that will be part of the crew. All right. That, that is it. That is the last step. So um, there was something else I was going to mention. Uh, 
Oh yes, the rope or the tow cable is I haven't done that yet. So heaps to heaps to go, heaps to go. Alright, so what are we gonna do? I'm gonna paint that with the uh where is it? Gunmetal. There's our X10 gunmetal. Give that a shake. Get my nice tiny little brush. Probably I would say something very small. That one there looks good. Uh, yeah. So that's a size zero 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 zero. <laughs> so icky sticky brushes. Fantastic. All right. Okay. There's the other side. I have a habit of building up clutter around me. Does anyone else have that problem with so much clutter? <laughs> one of these days, one of these videos, I'm going to turn my camera to my right and you can just have a look at the, uh, the state of my model table, bench, kitchen, dining table. <laughs> In fact, uh, let's have a quick, let's have a quick look. All right, here we go. Let's turn this around this way. Go up. And there we go. Look at that. Okay. Stuff everywhere. <laughs> uh, believe it or not. I know where it all is. Yeah, and it's it's strange because sometimes you think, well, you know, I'm not going to use my mark fit for a while, so why not put that actually away? There are places in the cupboard where this all this goes. I've got a file over there I'm using on another build, but you know, all the paints sitting over there, you know, they should be over in the my the paint. Um, paint slash spare bedroom um, area, although like in this case where I've had to reach and grab the uh, gun metal, it was convenient to have it right, right there. Okay, so let's do this. And I just want to check if it's the whole thing or is it just to, actually it's the whole thing. Simple pack. Oh, sorry. And I'm off camera, aren't I? <laughs> there we go. Big one like that. A little bit underneath. Looks good. And of course we gotta get the end of it. Now I could have drilled a hole in here, but you know some things are just a little bit too crazy, you know. There we go. So that is done. Back on. Now I just uh, find where that was on the instruction so I can cross that off. That was step. Uh, I went past it. Where are we? Uh, 25 it was. That's done. Okay, good stuff. All right, now I'll be back. I just got to clean this brush. We'll move on to the next thing.
Okay, hello, back again. Um, I've painted the tracks in the iron, black iron, they're drying. We'll have a look at them. I want to make sure they're completely dry before I touch them. But they've, they've come up really good. We'll have a look at them shortly. At the moment, I'm doing the tow rope. I thought, well, I'm running out of things to do. Well, without doing the figures anyway. I'm not even thinking about that. <laughs> So I'm doing the tow rope. So I've cut off a piece of the um, cable, I should say, cable, which comes with the kit. We have uh, a piece that comes like that. And there's plenty of excess left over, so that's good. Um, and then there's the um, tow cable hitches that it goes into, just here, which I've just glued them in. That should be fine. They're going on the back of the tank here. They have to go around these. I'm a little bit concerned about getting one in there because um, one of the hooks has to go over there. It doesn't seem to be too much space. Right, we'll see how that goes. Um, there's a method to putting this on. Basically just threading it through. It doesn't look too complicated. The tricky part seems to be this little bit here that says enameled wire. So there's a bit of wire that holds the rope together in the center there. That could be tricky to, to put on. Um, they supplied the wire here. I'm guessing that's it. Uh, but it has to be painted black. Well, not black. Um, uh, metallic gray, which is what the ends of these have to be painted. It also has to be metallic, um, metallic gray. But I'm not sure how I'm going to actually get that on there yeah that could be really tricky anyway I haven't tried so we'll see but for the moment I just need to paint these these up so let me do that first maybe I'm just gonna test fit something first now that I've got these glued on, just want to see if that's going to go in there. It's... Oh yes, it does. That's a tight fit in there. I was worried I'd have to take that hook off to get it in because that basket's in there. Because uh, on the instructions, they haven't fitted that yet, which is probably why. <laughs> but it, it clears, so we're good to go. Um, so now I will, as I was, I'm going to paint these metallic. And, uh, it seems to be just the um, the rope in where it, oh, I keep saying rope. It's steel cable, obviously. You're tying a tank here. So, yeah, cable is the only part that's the metallic, which I've just done there, like that. So, whereas this part, I think, is going to be the same color as the tank, which will be fine. So, let me paint the other side. That. Do the inside of it, make sure it's all covered. This is um, just for your reference XF56 is the metallic that I'm using, and that's what's recommended in the kit. So I think that looks good. Uh, yeah, just a little bit more on that. Right, that's it. And what I'll do is I'll hang these to dry, which I've got my little alligator clip. I ordered more of these from Icky Sticky. 
Because I was running out. And these are much better. These are a lot longer as well. So I've got another 20, I think. There's about 20 in a pack. Maybe more. I've got more than enough now. But, uh, you'll notice through my other videos that I was forever trying to get some more. All right, so that's done. Lid back on. I'll do the, when that's dry, which won't take more than you know, 20 minutes, I'll do the other part with the tan. I just hand do that on. And then we'll uh, loop it on here. See about that wire. Uh, once again, I've got to go clean my brush. And uh, there'll be another part, part of the tank done. Okay, I'll be back in a second. Okay, how are you all? Welcome back again. So, um, what am I doing? What am I doing? The chipping. I've forgotten all about the chipping. I was getting to the point on the tank where I might as well do a clear coat because I need to start weathering. And I figured the upper hull's finished, the lower hull's, everything's on except the tracks. The turret's all done. So I thought, well, I've got to give it all a clear coat. Um, but then I realized, hang on, I can't do that because I've got to do all the chipping because I've had all that ready to go. Uh, all the fluids been under my base coat there. So I have to do chipping. So that's what I'm starting. Now, up in the top corners there, I'll put a couple of photos of what I've done because, because it's way too hard to see on camera. Uh, see, I've just started a little bit under the guard there. That's what those photos are, just showing under there. And you can see what I mean, how the, the grey is coming through under, not underneath, which is the original colour, and it, it's going to look really nice. Of course, there'll be weathering on top of that, but pretty much I have to go right across the whole tank, all of it, uh, with a toothpick, because to do that was using a toothpick, and a bit of water, so I've got like a container of water here. I've also got a brush, and I've got one here of coarse bristles, and that one I'm just pretty much just going like that, and getting the chips, and it's coming off quite well. It's chipping really nicely, um, hardly any effort at all, but i got to go right over the whole tank to the point where everything's chipped that I want, and I mean things like the side of the hatches, uh, the grills around the grill areas, um, around the edges of the turret, just all the corners of the tank, all those areas, I'm imagining it's going to be fairly well damaged in the way of chipping. Um, because when you think about it, this, is, this was in the Sahara Desert in Egypt. I mean, it's getting sandblasted every day. <laughs> So it's going to be quite a mess. And then on top of that, with the chips, will be my AK um, North African dust um, pigments, which will go well over the chipping, I, I think. And like I said, I've never done this before. The chipping's working really well. Um, so, But it's going to take me a lot of time. Unless I'm sorry you don't want to be watching me doing this for the next, I would say literally this is going to be two days. I'm going to throw on a nice, a good um, podling, uh, podcast on for um, and listen to that in the background because it's hard to watch a movie when you've got to watch what you're doing as well. So, yeah, I'll listen to a couple of podcasts. The tracks will dry properly. Um, I'm going to give the tracks a, um, uh, what do you call that when you, I want to get the silver metallic looking, bits on the raised sections to come up. Dry brush, of course. So I'm going to dry brush over the tracks um, to get a bit of the metal showing through. Uh, yeah. So, but yeah, like I say, this chipping is going to go right everywhere. Like all here, even under the tank I'm going to do. A whole lot around the turret, particularly around um, high use areas on the turret here. You know, all around here that gets touched a lot, I guess. All the edges. So what I'll also do is um, 
well you've seen photos before but i'll take some photos as i go and um and we'll see how well it progresses the other thing too with this is um i finished this so our tow cable is done but that that's when I also thought, well, I don't want to be clear coating over the top of that because that's just a material for the cable. So that's something that's going to go on right at the end. So I won't be putting that on. That'll be going into the little box of uh, things at the end that need to go on, <laughs> which is this. You can see I've taken all the, the spare wheels and the jerry cans off so I can get in there with the chipping. So, yeah, the tow cable will go in there as well. Um, yeah, that's it. So, um, for me, it's going to be about two days. For you, it's going to be about three seconds. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, here I go. Um, but I'll, I'll show progress as I go. I'll get some good photos and we'll, we'll see how it looks. Fingers crossed. Back shortly. Okay, hello. Welcome back. So, <laughs> it's been about oh, four hours, four, nearly five hours, and I've been busy chipping away. And, uh, well, let's have a look at it. Tell me what you think in the comments below. So, you can see all the chipping work all the way along the side there. It's come up really well, I think. I'll just move this slowly so that it focuses properly. See all the chipping there on the guard. All the way along the front there, all the marks. Here's some on the other guard. Turn it around, there we go. Quite a bit of chipping all the way around. I think it looks really, really good. Back there, over here. Let me just turn this around. There you go. So that that's basically just showing down to the the paint. There's not going to be any rust really. This was in the desert. There's no water around. Might be some slight dust uh, rust maybe around where the jerry cans are in there so i may put a bit in there but other than that i even did under the guards here so you can see them on both sides there all the chipping which you won't see because they'll be right up close to the tracks but that was sort of like a practice area for me like i said i've never done this before now we're going to lose the focus aren't i now, I haven't done the top. That's what I'm up to now. So I'm going to slowly work along and do the top. You just get this focus back again, back in a second. Okay, that's locked there, so it's focused. But, uh, yeah, it's come up well. I mean, there's a lot, of, lot more weathering to go yet. I've still got um, a wash I want to put over it, bring up all the panel lines a little bit better and the bolts. Um, but the, this chipping needs to be done before the clear coat. That's the main thing. As soon as this chipping is done, I'll be putting the clear coat across. Of course, this is just the upper hull. I've got the rest of the tank to go yet. So, yeah, it's very, very time consuming. But in the end, the results look pretty good, I think. So, okay. I'll get back to work on the top of this and then I'll probably start on the turret. I'll start working on this and uh, yeah, we'll come back a little bit further on in the progress. Okay, back shortly in your time. For me, it's going to be another few hours. Okay. Hey guys, back again. Finish the top that I'll just quickly show you. Come out really well. Mainly did the chipping around the areas that would be used, around the hatches that would be opened quite a bit, where they might be walking quite a lot, around the vents on the back here. So it's come up really nice, I think. 
So right now I'm about to go and um, clear coat this and let's put that aside to dry while I start on the turret. But uh, I want to get that clear coat on, then we can um, start weathering um, some other parts of it. All right. So, uh, yeah, back shortly. Okay, back again. I think I've finished the turret now. I don't want to give it too much. This area along the top would rather probably not get touched. So I'm not putting too much of the chipping on there. Done a little bit of chipping around the sides here, around under the under the hatch here. Um, done a little bit around the corner of that hatch there, a little bit on here. Same around here. Any corners and edges, just slight chipping. And again on the front, just a very subtle. I think that's probably about as far as I will go doing that. And uh, yeah, that's come up really good too. So I'm going to um, the other um, upper hull is clear coated and drying. I think I'll go and clear coat this one now. And then uh, it'll be a matter of starting on the um, the hull here, this, this part, which is again, move that aside. So this will have quite a bit of um, chipping particularly uh, on the front here, uh, around the back. All this area around the back here is going to get all chipped. The underside, obviously, yes. I'll do all through under here. And uh, not too much on the inside of there, because a lot of that will be hidden by the tracks. And... Uh, I don't know if that would... I'll have to have a look at some reference photos. I may not need to do too much chipping. It's going to be dirty in there, like sandy and, and so forth. We can have a lot of the sand dust um, uh, pigments put through under there. Same with the tyres. So we'll see. Uh, obviously, the chipping will probably be needed... Uh, yeah, definitely throughout under the underneath all these um, suspension and uh, what they call these like the rails, uh, the bogies. They called them the bogies, didn't they? Yeah, so they're not going to be in really great shape. Uh, and obviously here on the front, in here, oh, yeah, lots of chipping, chip, chip, chipping. <laughs> all right, uh, I'll keep going, keep progressing back again shortly hey welcome back so I thought I'd just show you a bit of this chipping process and what I'm doing so pretty much the secret to this is be patient and don't um, try to rush it because it just it just works like magic really <laughs> um, so just as a reminder, there's the chipping fluid I'm using. So it's a worn effects acrylic fluid by AK. All right, and that's going to last forever. I've hardly used any of that. Now, when I sprayed it on, I put a decent layer on, you know, good coverage, but I didn't let it pool or anything. I, I just put a nice layer like you would as a base coat over everything. Um, I've heard that if you let it be flooded on too much, then it can chip off in sheets of paint that you don't want, whereas you just want spots of chipping, you know. Um, so afterwards, I put the paint on. I just paint it as per normal, you know, that's all. And I think this part of it depends on how thick a layer of paint you put on. So I did... Uh, two layers of base coat on here, and then I've left it. Like I painted this a week ago now, and the chipping's not happening any faster or slower or any harder or easier than the chipping I did three or four days ago when I first started on the upper hull. So you don't have to worry about putting this on and then having to start the chipping. You can just leave it on and come to your chipping whenever you're ready. 
I mean, I don't know if I'd leave it a month later, but, you know. And like I say, it's all about patience. You just slowly, you know, work along. The toothpick is the, is the best way I've found to do this. Um, this really works the best way. You start rubbing it across and nothing happens, and that's okay. You just keep the dampness on there. You keep it wet, and gradually it will come through as it's starting to there. And you just lighten up a little bit, and you get it around the rivets. So you get your rivet detail. You get your scratches down on the side, these panels here, because that areas, areas around like that are going to get scratched as these things are opened, tops of vents. Don't forget, these things are running through, you know, different obstacles. I mean, all right, this is in the desert, so they're not going through many tree branches and stuff. But the difference with this tank is it's getting sandblasted. It's going through sandstorms. So your chipping is going to be really small, really light. If you look at the cover art on the box of this, you'll see that there's the chipping... Uh, it actually shows all the marks all around the place and how small it is. Um, so yeah, you just, just work it really slowly and just take your time, you know. See, this part here is coming up really good. Usually the top of latches, you know, they're going to have marks on them. If you just keep rubbing it, Gradually, it's going to start chipping. You can see, probably can't, but this slowly paint's coming off in the coat underneath. Now, if this was a tank in Russia or somewhere where the climate was wet, um, then you'd have a rust situation. So, unlike my coat underneath, which is uh, grey, because that's, as far as I could find out, is the original um, coat color underneath the base coat but if it were rust then you want rust coming through this chipping is what you would be using to show rust come through you know, so see under the under the little hat latches there um, this here because you know you've got to think also of the direction of scratches see that's chipping there now it's coming up on there it's nice. Get a bit there too. So I would expect there'd be quite a bit around this area of the tank on the front here. It's like heading into wherever it's going. Um, but yeah, just slowly work it. Um, there's also, I tried using a toothbrush, but it seems a bit big. Um, and I, I don't want to flood water on there too much. And it doesn't really work so good. Um, all I use is just a tiny little brush like that, just to apply the water. And it's just normal tap water, that's all. And then slowly work over it like this. You'll see a little spot appear. And then that spot will grow as the water gets under it. And then you can go as far as you want. I mean, I haven't made any really large patches because I don't think there would be any. Um, but, you know, you can see it just starting to appear there. And then if you wipe it, just got to be careful you don't knock parts off when you're doing this. Yeah. Uh, you can probably see the little marks inside there, a little bit on the side there. I'll probably do a bit more on the edges. And then I'll work on the rear around here. Um, there's going to be lots of bits of chipping in that. I mean, you could imagine, you know, the mess that's going to be in under there. <laughs> Everything in the, getting flicked up through there. So there'll be a lot of... Uh, just slowly going through. Probably with the brush would be better. Go in there, wet it all. Let that water soak in. Do your straps. There's straps holding a little tank on the back there. Around the suspension. Yeah. That will be chipped to hell there. 
Now the muffler, I didn't do any chipping fluid on the muffler. I've just left it that that color. But and I am going to probably um, have some worn effects on those as well. Um, but I haven't really got into how I'm going to do that yet. Um, there may be some rust, a little bit of rust coloring in there somewhere. That's about all. Um, same with on the upper hull where the jerry cans sit that carry water. I'll probably put a little bit of rust in there as well, just because, you know, people accessing those jerry cans are going to spill water around. But you can see what I mean, very subtle little spots. Um, I'll be doing the chipping around this main drive wheel here because that's going to be chipped to, to hell as well, I'm sure. And in under there, even though the tracks are going to go there and all this is going to get dirtied up. So, but it's coming up real well. In the next uh, shot when I come back, well, what I'll do is I'll finish this part now. The other two have been um, clear coated, look really nice, clear coated. I'll clear coat this one and then I'll bring them all the pieces out and have, we'll have a look at them and then we'll look at what's the next pro in the process. Okay, I'll be back shortly. Okay, we're back again. Um, I finished doing this. I'm just waiting for the areas I had wet all to dry, but you can tell there, you can see all the scratching and everything underneath. Um, all in the front here. All under here, yeah. So that's come up really well. I'll just let that dry. Then I'm going to go clear coat it. In the meantime, I'm working on the tracks here. Here, now I'm just giving them a, a metallic grey uh, dry brush. You can see that's already come up. I've just done this one all the way along the top. I'm also going to do on the inside. But if we compare it to one that I haven't done, it's that one, this one here, so you can see the difference. Yeah, yeah you can see that metallic look, it definitely looks a lot more realistic. So, so I'm just going to finish up. I was just brushing over it, and now I'm going to do the insides, especially where the tracks um, make contact, basically. So it's mainly in that center bit area there, both sides. Uh, let me just you really got to get the paint off the brush, get it down to you can see here. Practically nothing, you just go along like this. You probably won't be able to see in there, but that's coming up. A bit of shine. Now, of course, these are going to get dusted, you know, and weathered a lot more. So I don't know how much this will still show up. But uh, definitely looking more metallic metal looking, aren't they? And of course you won't really see much of this either because it's the underside. But, uh, you know, it's all in the detail, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, see? Just put in that shine on there you can see that in there it looks a lot better doesn't it all right i'm going to go do the rest of this one and do the other one by then uh this will be dry enough to go and put the clear coat on, then uh, we'll come back and have a look at them all clear coated. Okay, be back then. 
Hey, welcome back everybody. So here we go with all our parts. All the main tank, um, all clear coated at the moment. Uh, here you can see the finished result of the um, clear coats come up really nice. Um, I've done all the, um, what do you call it? Um, the weathering of the Chipping, chipping, that's the word I was looking for. All on the top here is all done as well. It's all looking nice. And there's our turret. Okay, all looking good as well. And I'd like to thank Ralph Ford in the comments. Give him a bit of credit for subtly reminding me to paint the hatch for the driver down here after I did all the top. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> uh, yeah, so all looking good. Now, that's ready. All this is ready for um, further weathering. Probably the next thing I'll be doing is these wheels. And um, that'll be with the dust. So I'll be getting the dust on the wheels just to see how they start, how they look. Um, probably do something with that muffler as well. Um, let me just move this away and I'll show you what I was doing on the side while this was drying. Um, also, these accessories like the jerry cans and the spare wheels and that, haven't clear coated those yet. Um, but what I might do is just wait because obviously I'll, do, I'll be doing another clear coat to seal everything in that's been weathered. Um, so I'll probably have them on when I do that. Either way, I'll get to those. All right, I'll be back in a second. I'll show you what I was up to while this was all drying. Okay, so what we've got here are our figures. Here they are. So, over there. There's our instructions. So all I've done at this stage is just put them together. Um, and thank, uh, I'll give credit to Hibbo. Simon, thank you for giving me a few tips on um, how I'm going to go about painting these and putting them together. Um, I've been watching a few videos, so I've got a pretty good idea. I have black um, primer and I have white paint, so the black will be able to paint them all black to start with and then get the shadow detail by doing the white spraying down to get that shadow all the uh, creases in the uniforms and other detail never done this before so we'll see how that goes um yeah so all the bits are there all most of the accessories are not on there is one guy here who sits on the side of the tank he's um 39b where you need to put the gun he's carrying a gun there you need to put that gun on him because otherwise, if you stick his arm on, there won't be enough room to slide the gun underneath. So that'll be require a little detail, careful brushing to get that gun to come up. Um, but anyway, the whole thing, all of them are going to take some careful brushing. So thankfully, uh, I've got a good collection of sticky, sticky brushes to help me do that. Um, as for the paints, I have to go through and check. I know I've got the uniform colours. I know I've got the skin colour. The rest, I'll have to just double check and see what I can do. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's it's looking good. All right. So, um, now, now I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Because <laughs> I've got tracks over there as well. See, I've got my tracks here. As you saw, all done with a bit of a silver dry brush on them, which will need a bit more weathering as well, and um, and the tank itself. So what I will do actually is I'm going to go and spray paint these. I'm going to get these all mounted somehow so I can handle them. I'm not sure what I'll do yet. I'm thinking um, it was Jeff Donahue who gave me the hint when working on really small parts is I might drill a hole in the bottom of their boot um, 
just to put in, I've got some 0.2 mil wire, which I'll glue in there, and that will hold him up. And that way I can um, attach him to the top of anything with the other end of the wire, I guess. Um, even if it's just an alligator clip. Not sure. I'll figure this out. Not sure. But whatever I do, I'll show you what I've done, <laughs> as always. All right. Back, back shortly. Okay, welcome back again. Uh, you'll notice a color change in the mat. Uh, fortunately, the icky, sticky, uh, self-healing cutting mats uh, have designs on both sides. And I have a bit of a, uh, let's say, a CA activator spill. <laughs> uh, yeah, nothing serious. But now I've got this blotch mark there that doesn't look too good. So... We're into the light blue, which I think looks pretty good. So, now, what I did, I went with the toothpick idea. There's all our guys. They're all stuck to the toothpicks. All the heads and the bodies. Ready to get uh, black Mr. Surfacer put on them. I'm going to go do that right now. Okay, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, welcome back, guys. So... There's my figures. We won't be able to see them because they're so black, but they're coloured in the black Mr. Surface of 1500. I literally did these 10 minutes ago. Okay. So there's one there. You can see. I pretty much just covered them in black surfacer. So the idea behind this is I got I got my ideas from watching the famous Mr. Night Shift. And he did a video uh, a few months ago, I think it was February this year, on painting these figures. So what I'm going to do is, uh, and also with the help from Simon, who gave me his uh, bit of advice, is I'm going to spray these with white, just a, a Tamiya X2 white, once this is completely dry, from the top down so that all the seams and all the contours and all the detail will have that shadow of the black underneath the white. Then I'll let that dry, and then the idea is to get your, say for example, there's some um, olive drab, or there's some other khaki colour, whatever I'm going to do the colours with, really water them down using a palette. Um, thin them right down and do them up like a wash, layer by layer, until you get the level that you want and still have that shadow detail. That's the plan. I've never done this before. What the hell? I'm going to give it a shot. And, um, yeah, we'll see how it comes out. That's going to be in the next video. Um, that's what I've got time for in, in this one. So... Hang around, please, if you haven't already, subscribe. Hit that notifications bell so you know when the next one's coming out and you get notified. Um, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. That helps the algorithm. Um, comments below if you've got any comments. Maybe you've got some tips on doing this. Um, some of your own ideas would be good. Um, this video will go up and go live, and you'll see this before I continue on doing more so if you do put something in comments, then I can go, ah, that sounds great, and I'll give it a go. All right. Um, between now and the other next video, I'll probably do some weathering of the tracks and um, maybe do a bit of a practice and see how my um, sanding of uh, North Africa dust pigments are going to go on. All right. So, But these guys can hang off, and I'll... Wait until you guys put some comments in maybe and then I'll continue on. All right, so again, thank you very much for watching. Please, this is a... I'm mean, really enjoying this group build. Um, go have a look in the description. You'll see the links to Jason and Simon's channels who also got this build. They're pretty much done now. Uh, I know um, Simon's finished his tank. Uh, it's come up and look, looks really good. He's gone ahead and done the um, Russian version of it 
and uh, in the German grey, and it looks really, really good. Whip over there and have a look. And uh, Jason's doing the same as me, and uh, I think we're, I don't think he's done his figures yet at this point. So um, whip over to his channel and have a look as well. All right, I'm off, and I'll see you all in part 12. Bye for now.